Hi, I'm Alexandra. I'm Tommy. And I'm Jared. And you're watching Movie Buffs. So, uh, to start off, we're going to talk about The Witch, which is has been out for a little bit, but um, it's notable enough that like it's still worth talking about, and I think you can still catch it in theaters for a few more days. Um, if not, then like you know, catch it at like an art theater or whatever. Um, so just in one sentence, The Witch is a slow burn traditional Puritan thriller. <laughs> now, before we go any farther, <laughs> you have to ask yourself as a moviegoer, do these things appeal to you? Do you like <laughs> thrillers that take their sweet old time to get to that quote, really scary parts? Um, if at all, and secondly, do you like films about 1600s New England Puritans? Um, if neither of those things appeal to you, then I'm sorry to say, but The Witch is probably not for you. Um, however, if you appreciate precise, well-executed film technique, then it might be worth the money. So, you simply cannot beat the level of technical skill seen here. Starting off just by going through the laundry list, the mise-en-scene is incredible, this being mostly attributed to the cinematography and the lack of use of bright colors. Everything is kind of washed in these grays and blues. Um, next, the sound, holy cow. As much as I am a movie buff, I am also an audio buff, and this film delivered with mind-blowing sound use. Um, whether it was the blaring, cringeworthy score that would burst in without warning, or the complete claustrophobic silence, um, sound plays an irreplaceable role in telling this story. My only bone to pick with this film was how it was branded. The Witch is marketed as a horror film. Well, I wouldn't go as far as calling it even a thriller. Um, yes, it was unnerving, but in this industry, you have to be very aware of the preconceived notions um, of your audience members. And from the man snoring in the front row of my movie theater, I feel like the marketing team may have missed a mark here. Um, to me, this film was more of a psychological family drama than a witch thriller. Um, and it's important to remember that if you choose to uh, take a chance on this truly cinematic film. So before I saw The Witch, I'd read mostly only good things about it, um, but everything I'd heard an anecdotally from friends who'd seen it um, was pretty negative, and their complaints all had a similar theme. Uh, they went into this expecting a horror movie, and instead they got something entirely different, um, kind of like Alexandra touched on. So it's important when you're evaluating this film to separate what it actually is versus what it was marketed as. And what it is, is not a horror movie. It is a period piece with exquisite attention to detail that disturbs you more than it scares you. It does a masterful job of constantly ratcheting up the tension, the sense of unease, as these characters struggle against some malevolent entity and try to turn to their religion for solace, but don't find any. Um, this movie, really, it left me more unsettled than anything I've seen in a long time. Um, that it did this is a credit to first-time writer-director Robert Eggers. Uh, the attention to detail that he puts in this movie, you know, the sets, the costumes, um, the dialogue, which is very, very old school, um, it all transports you into the heart of 17th century Puritan Massachusetts. Um, and it's clear that he really draws on his background here as a costume designer um, to get everything right. And that's actually like the only previous credits on his IMDb page. This guy had not done a lot, but he, uh, he was really impressive here. But the dude is just a natural at filmmaking. Um, his camera lingers for longer than you'd expect on, on seemingly benign subject, and it really makes you wonder if there's something sinister going on in these everyday uh, in these pieces of these characters' daily lives. And the answer to that question is usually yes. Uh, the film score does a lot of work here too, as Alexandra mentioned. Um, it's high-pitched strings that almost scream at you um, as the camera will, for example, slowly pan in on a static shot of a forest. Um, and from the beginning, it just clues you in that something is very very wrong. I haven't even talked about the performances yet, but newcomer Anna Taylor-Joy, um, she really makes herself a star here as a headstrong uh, eldest daughter of this family. Um, and Game of Thrones alums Ralph Ineson and Kate Dickey, uh, they shine as her parents. Ineson kind of has this quiet dignity throughout the film as he tries to keep his family grounded and keeps tries to turn them towards their religion um, to, to battle uh, this malevolent force, um, even though he ultimately fails. And then uh, Dickey just quickly and dramatically goes insane as she starts losing her children one by one. And that um, is probably one of the scarier parts of the film. Um, so if you know what to expect, as in not a horror movie, um, and you want to see something that you've never seen before, uh, The Witch will not disappoint. It has me really excited to see what Eggers does with his remake of Nosferatu, which is going to be his next film. Um, 
if you take anything away from this, is that you will never look at a guilt the same way again. 10 Cloverfield Lane is the spinoff you never knew you needed. Announced just two months before it's release, and directed by the completely unknown Dan Trachtenberg, it's been a pleasant surprise to audience, critics, and the box office. I was lucky enough to go into this with essentially no knowledge of the plot or anything about the film in general, which I would recommend to anyone if that's possible. Without giving too much away, I can tell you that John Goodman is amazing in this film. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, uh, the girl from Scott Pilgrim hmm. versus the World, plays a strong, competent female protagonist. Um, if you love films that make you think, films that have complex characters, films that you can have an interesting conversation with your friends afterward, I promise you, you will love 10 Cloverfield Lane. The one thing I will say is to not expect uh, too much of a crossover with the previous Cloverfield movie. Uh, the creators have compared the relationship between these films uh, to like the Twilight Zone, so similar in theme but not in universe or timeline per se. So go on with an open mind, no expectations if you can, and you'll come out of 10 Cloverfield Lane more than satisfied.